Alrighty, adjusting volume. Hey guys, welcome to Makeup Tip Monday. Today's a fun, fun day because it's National Lash Day. I know it's another holiday. I can't even remember. Maybe it's like President's Day or something. But um, for me, National Lash Day is like a little bit, I don't know, more important even. Um, and today I'm doing a review of direct selling brand mascaras. Now, I could have done drugstore. I know that. That's coming. Um, we're also going to do high-end brands. That's coming. Yes, I have all of those and I love your suggestions. So today, as I go through, if there's some other mascaras you want um, me to try that you absolutely love, post the pictures in the comments. I've gotten some of those today and I would love to try some of the mascaras that you love. But we all love to support our direct selling girlfriends. If you're like me, you want to buy from people who is going to affect their income, small business owners, ladies that are trying to um, make extra income from home or they stay home with their family and they do direct sales as um, a way to make sure extra income or maybe they do it even full time. So I always prefer if I can give my business to another small business owner to do that. And so that's why today we're going to do direct selling mascaras. Now, I know some of you who are watching are going to be reps for some of those brands. Hey girls. Hey, happy Monday. Um, and if you are a rep for a different line, I know this is hard because Coming from a direct sales background, we want to absolutely love what we, everything we have, but that's not always, always a reality. And so I hope I don't offend anybody today. I'm sure I'm going to because some of these things I didn't like that much. Some of them I absolutely loved. A lot of it was really surprising. Um, but I would encourage you to try some other things. I think that makes you a stronger salesperson when you're aware of the other products that are out there, when you've tried the other products that are out there, and when you know how to compare them to what you offer. I can't tell you how many inbox messages I've even gotten over the last six months like, hey girl, how's that product? How's this product? And I'm like, well, just try it and see. Oh no, I don't want to do that because that would be cheating on my company. That is total BS. You will be a much better salesperson when you are more educated about what is out there and you figure out what really works from your line and what maybe isn't that awesome. You know, when I was in direct sales for all those years, there was a mascara that worked for about 70% of my clients that on me, it ran all over my face and I couldn't confidently sell it. Um, so hopefully you'll take this as try some different things. Um, there are other great lines out there. Not every line is strong in every area. You know, some are really good at some things and not so great at other things. And, but you have to try it to see. You can't just make judgments about other product lines and go, oh, well, theirs probably sucks. Mine's the best when you haven't even tried it. So try it. Um, for those of you who aren't reps for direct selling lines, I know you want to support your direct selling girlfriend. So let's get started. All right. I ranked these 10 mascaras from my least favorite today to my most favorite. So we're going to go backwards. <clears throat> and some of these companies you guys may have never even heard of before. I know I hadn't heard of them until like, I don't know, like a year ago, some of them. And um, some of them I've fallen in love with, some of them not so much. All right. Number 10. Are y'all ready for this? I know, Joanna. I was, I was the same way. It ran all over my face. I tried everything and just couldn't get it to work. But all right. Number 10 is Lash Sense. All right, girls, you know I have done a review of, of Lash, not Lash Sense, but Cinegence. Cinegence is a very old direct selling line. They're making a huge comeback with Lip Sense, which is the permanent 24 hour lipstick. So I did try what's called Lash Sense. Now, the reason also that this got 10 on my list is because it's waterproof and I really don't like waterproof formulas, but that's all they offer. So I figured I'm going to go ahead, try it, see what I think. Um, I'm going to let you see what it looks like. It's a very small tube. Here's the applicator, which I actually really like that kind of brush. That's one of my very favorite types of brushes but um, it dries really, really fast, so it wasn't super buildable. Now, for me, I don't have any lashes really, so I have to really spend time building up the lash by doing several coats of mascara with all of these. I do two and three coats of mascara, and this one dried so fast, but when I went to put a second coat on and build it, it wouldn't build for me. So, didn't like the way it applied, 
and then it would not come off. I have tried every type of remover to get it off and I could not get it off. The only way it would come off was if I got in the shower and the humidity of the shower and washing my hair made it smudge all under my under eye and then I had to scrub. So I'm not a huge fan of waterproof because it does take a lot of time and energy to get it off. It's hard to get off and you have to pull on your face and I don't like to pull on my face because I don't want to age. Hello? Okay, so Lash Sense got number 10 for me. Plus, I will add, Lash Sense's um, packaging is just, it's just ugly. I'm sorry, I know that's not on the subject, but I feel like they could use a overhaul in their rebrand, everything. Um, and it came in a little bubble mailer, no box, just a bubble mailer, boom, here's your mascara. So they could work on that. All right, so number nine, and this comes down to the subject of does expensive always equal better? Because two of the most expensive mascaras I tried were Arbonne and Beauty Counter. Now, the one that I'm listing as number nine is Beauty Counter's, well, I'm gonna switch this a little bit. Beauty Counter's volumizing or lengthening. I'm gonna say both of them, they're interchangeable. Lengthening is what we'll, we'll mention first. All right, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Now I actually, again, really like these teeny tiny little applicators. And the reason I do is because you make less mistakes. You can get into the teeny tiny little spots that you maybe couldn't reach with a really fat brush. You can get into your inner eye really well, the outside tip. You can really fan out the bottom lashes. So if you like a natural look, if you like your lashes not to look so, so intense, if you have problems with maybe clumping or, I don't know, you just like a simple lash look, this might be good for you. But for me, I want it to lengthen and volumize and they put their formulas in two separate mascaras. So Beauty Counter, you have to buy a volumizing and a lengthening. Now, not a lot of people are gonna do that because this is $29 and this is $29. So to get both, you have to spend $60 on your mascara. So. I didn't really like the lengthening very much, although I loved the brush and it really did fan out my lashes and it would be great for people who like a more simple lash look. I just didn't care for it that much. I really need to build up my lashes and so I would say that the lengthening beauty counter was a no-go for me. And then number eight was the volumizing. Um, again, $29, I'll show you the brush. Here's the brush. Now the brush is a little bit fatter and it's got those two humps like a camel. This kind of, um, this kind of brush is sort of like um, one of you guys mentioned Better Than Sex by Too Faced, which I have and I do like that product, but this is the same sort of brush that you've got the two big humps. It didn't go on super, super well. I felt like I had to really build it up. I had to keep putting coats on to get that intensity and other lines gave me that intensity from the very first coat. So. I don't know, it just wasn't my favorite. I feel like I'm on The Bachelor. This whole process has been The Bachelor. Like, I just don't connect to you as well as some of the others. I mean, you're great and all, you're just not a good fit for me. Okay, all right. So then the next line was Alouette. Alouette, I will have to say, if none of you have heard of this line before, I have absolutely sort of fallen in love with some of their products. I have purchased a hand cream, I've purchased a five minute facial, I've purchased a few other things, and I'm kind of having a little love affair with this product line. So I think it's a must try, so I tried both of their lines. They have a lengthening um, called Intensity Stretch and they have one called A-List, two different kinds of mascaras again. So, number seven, I didn't really like their Intensity Stretch that much. I'm going to show you the brush and again this is Alouette great brush great to lengthen and to volumize at the same time but again I didn't get that intensity it didn't seem as buildable to me I had to do three really good coats when you know you're sitting there and you're working on it for a while you're like ah, 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 trying to get more coats on um, then it really isn't for you. Plus, this one transferred on me right away. So I'd love to hear from you guys what your biggest lash issue is. I'm gonna tell you what my biggest lash issue is, is that whatever I put on will transfer it to my bottom um, area here. So um, some of the girls that I work out with were like, what is transfer? I was like, it's when um, you haven't even worked out, you haven't been crying, nothing weird happened, but then you look and you're like, oh, what is that right there? 
And then you have to get in and you have to smudge it out. And then when you smudge it out, it removes your concealer and it moves your powder and it ruins your under eye area. That is my biggest issue. How about you guys? Is it clumping? Is it transfer? Is it that you need more length? You need more volume? I don't know. Tell me. I'd love to know. But mine is transfer. And this one transferred after, before I even walked out the door. So then I'm smudging out under my under eye. And then I went to church with it on. And I'm a crier. <laughs> it's so bad. Girls, I can't even be on Facebook right now without crying because of these stories that are popping up on my timeline. And um, so, of course, I cry in church, like crying the whole way through the church service. And it's so embarrassing. And I go to rub it off. And it doesn't just rub off easily. It's one of those kinds that kind of smear across my face. So I'm walking out looking crazy. I don't know what I look like. But then I get to the car and I'm like, ah! Um, <clears throat> so... I tried all of these a couple times. Like if I felt like, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I'm going to try it the next day and see. Same thing. Transferred. So I'm the same way. Yeah, transfer is my biggest issue. If it is going to run, it is going to run on me. So that was number seven. All right, moving on to number six. Some of you um, direct messaged me that you really liked the way, the way this one looked on me. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I have been putting pictures every single day of the different mascaras I've been trying. And it's in my highlights. So you can see every single mascara that I'm talking about today. You can see exactly the day that I wore it, how it looked, all that stuff. That is true. And I will say, Samantha just mentioned that Beauty Counter is known to be a safer ingredient. And that is very true, which... Um, their product line is a little more pricey, but you're getting that aspect of it. But I have found, Samantha, that with regards to her makeup, I didn't like other makeup as much either. Like, their skincare felt amazing, but the makeup just doesn't go on. You know what I mean? Like, I would pick up an eyeshadow, and I would load up my brush, and it just wouldn't put, it wouldn't go on my face. I'm like, what, where's the product going? Like in the air or is my brush like absorbing it? So it was very interesting because it's such a great line. The branding's great. The mission's great. Um, the bottles are beautiful, but like the makeup, I didn't get that real impact that I want from my makeup. So maybe that does affect the ingredients and how effective the makeup is. I don't know. All right. So good point. Number six, Mary Kay. So again, some of you probably saw these pictures. This was the most interesting of all of the packages. The prices are in the description so you can see how everything kind of lines up um, with regards to the cost of each of these. The Mary Kay mascara is 18 and everything ranged from around 16 to like 40 bucks. And so it's a great value. I'm going to show you the brush. Now out of all of the brushes, this was probably my least favorite. But if you are, how many of you girls are the ones who love like a big fat puffy brush? Like you really like those really fat ones. Well then you might like this brush. The reason I have a really hard time when the brushes are massive like this is because I have smaller eyes and there's more mistakes that I make. I have a really hard time getting, getting into all the crevices to reach every lash that I want to reach when they are this fat. So a little bit on the brush. I did have to put several coats to get it to really work up. You don't get that max impact right away. It is, nice thing is it is a lengthening and a volumizing mascara, so you eventually do get that volume, but when I did finally get enough on to get the volume, it was a little bit clumpy, and my lashes looked a little bit thick. Now, I don't have a problem with that as much. I like spidery lashes. I'm like all about it, um, but it just wasn't, again, I wanted, I wanted to find a mascara that just had the best of all of it, so I like you, Mary Kay. I'm going to use you, but... We're not getting married. Okay, so we are moving on to number five. So my top five favorite new mascaras. Number five is the Perfect Mascara by Limelight. I'm gonna show you the, um, the brush. Really, really, really liked Limelight. I felt like it went on from the very first coat. Um, it's a very large tube. You're looking at a really good price at $20. Um, I really have nothing negative to say about Limelight's mascara. It was just a great all-around mascara. But again, I just feel like I connected a little bit better with some of the others. So, there we go. Okay, 
Moving on, number four. Now, this company you may have never even heard of. Maybe some of you older ladies have, actually. Color Me Beautiful. Color Me Beautiful has several brands underneath their brand that they have purchased over the years. And this one is from the Gail Heyman LA line, and it was only $16. It's the Gail Heyman Mascara, and I was very surprised by this mascara because I really, really liked it. And I'm going to show you the brush. So you've got the stiff bristles, but then it comes to a little bit of a point. It's not too big. It's sort of medium sized. I was able to get into all those little fine crevices. Um, it's very buildable. It only transferred on me after an intense workout because yes, I wear makeup to the gym. Okay, especially mascara because I am not going out without mascara on. And that is the only time it transferred on me. And some of the others did, but we're talking about buckets of sweat coming off of my body. Um, <clears throat> Oh, I'll show you that in a second, yes. My brows are healing really, really well. And I'm so in love with my new brows. All right, number, number three. So number four was Color Me Beautiful. Number three favorite mascara was Alouette's A-List. I'm going to show you again. The applicator has a slight curve to it. You've got the longer bristles and the shorter bristles. Um, like I said, I'm having sort of a love affair with this company as far as some of the other products that I've tried. So I was really anxious to see how the mascara held up. Um, although I was not impressed as much with their intensity stretch, the A-list, I really, really liked. The intensity would build easily from the first coat. It stays on really well. I had no transfer whatsoever and it came off really easy. It also was great at a non-clumpy fanning out of the lashes. So this one is called Alouette. It's called A-List, their A-List mascara. And I have put everybody's names that I purchased from below in the description. So if there's something that you're curious about and you want to purchase, you can just go to their website and purchase. All right, y'all ready for the two, the top two. Top two um, um, best direct selling mascaras as far as I was concerned through this this process over a three week period. Number two was do, 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 Arbonne's. Oh my goodness. It's the most expensive one out of all of them. It was $39. But wow. Wow, wow, wow. From the very first time you touch your eyelashes, the intensity is like boom. It just it goes on so, so strong. And then you just can put on a couple extra coats if you want to to really build it up. You can tap it on the end. Um, no clumping, no transfer. It separates the lashes really, really well. I don't remember if I showed you the. It's a medium sized brush, and the bristles are really, really um, not flexible. They're like hard. And it does such a great job at separating the lashes so that you don't get any clumping. And so I would say, Sometimes, you know, girls with regards to cosmetics, when we find something we really love, we're willing to spend the extra to get it again. Sometimes it's not worth it. You know, like I didn't like the, the beauty counter mascara as much and it's pretty expensive. Whereas this one is the most expensive, but I would say it was number two on my list. Loved it. I'll be using it for myself again and again and again. It's going to go on my high rotation list. Arbonne's mascara, $39. It's called a long story. Okay, number one, only one left. And I actually haven't tried anything from this company except for their um, fiber mascara. All of you guys have heard of Unique, right? So Unique has their famous fiber mascara, but I did not try the fiber mascara because I didn't want to give them any kind of um, special treatment in that they had something extra that they offer. They have the fibers that you can add in. I just got the regular Mood Struck Mascara it is $24 and I have it on today. I'm obsessed. Love this mascara. Such a great value. Wow. From the very first application, it's buildable. It doesn't clump. Um, what I put on my blog post, which you guys will see in the next couple days, is this mascara does not make you work for it. It works for you from like the very first coat. So Love, love Unique's mascara. Again, there's the head of it, the brush. Um, and so it didn't transfer on me even after an intense workout. Um, I would say that 
Yes, it got the number one rank. It's my absolute favorite. Me and Unique um, Moodstruck are, we're going to get married. It's the epic mascara. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep Arbonne in my high rotation. I got to use all of these, y'all, because I got, I paid $300 for all these mascaras, so I'm going to use them all. But um, these two definitely were top of my list. And I want to add, for the sake of the review, I used the same concealer, the same powder, and the same foundation for three weeks. <coughs> Because sometimes when you use different products under and around your eyes, it can actually cause transfer. I also did not use any eyelash primer for the sake of the review because I didn't want to give any of these, mix it with any of these formulas and possibly mess up the formula. So I kept everything super consistent throughout the three weeks. I know that everybody's going to be different. Maybe you absolutely love one of these, right? You can totally disagree with me. But I would encourage you to try some of these different ones because it was... It was pretty eye-opening as I got to experiment with these. Oh, yay! Yeah, it was definitely my favorite. Okay. All right, and then um, we'll do direct selling, or we'll do drugstore brands, and we'll do high-end brands. That's coming in a couple months. But a couple announcements next week on Monday, I'm just going to do how I'm caring for my brushes right now, how I'm washing them and caring for them. That's it. Next Monday. And then two weeks from now, we have four spots left for headshots. If you need professional headshot, and I've said it a thousand times, girls, no more selfies, no more old shots, no more like... I don't know, you and like your whole family, if you have a business, you need to have just you as your profile picture on your business page so that when people scope you out, that's the first impression, that's the first thing they see. It's super duper important to have a really good professional headshot, professional one. Um, and that's in two weeks on Saturday, March 3rd. If you're interested and you're local to me, you can come. $160 means you get makeup, lashes, a photo shoot, and all of your images in a private gallery. We have four spots, just four spots left and the sign-ups on my page and on my blog. So we will see you guys then for those who signed up. Please put your comments. Let me know what your lash issues are and also tell me what your favorite mascaras are, whether they're drugstore or high-end brands. I'd love to know because I want to go buy them all and try them and do, it, do another review. All right? As always, I'll see you next Monday on Makeup Tip Monday. Bye, ladies.